Hello. In this video, we're going to look at how to use the string methods that are built in in the string class. But to start with, we're going to look at something we already know how to use. That is the methods in the math class. So up in front of you, I have the documentation up for the math class. And what we're familiar with is that if we scroll down here, you'll see that it has two constants that we can access, one for e and one for pi, as well as a number of methods. And we've become familiar with using them, and I'm going to look at specifically the max method. So what we can see here is that there's more than one max method, and this, if you remember, is the process of overloading a method. And overloading a method is when we have a number of different methods with the same name that take different parameters. The program, Java, can actually distinguish which method you're calling based on what you give it. So if I give the, if I give the method two doubles, it knows to call this version of max. Whereas if I give it two integers, it knows to call this version of max. So what, we, what we've already learned how to do, if we jump into a program here, is if I want to use the math class, I call it by putting the name of the class, which is math, dot the method name, which in this case is max, and then I pass it the two par parameters that it needs, which is two integers. So what this does essentially is finds the maximum value between 3 and 5, which we all know is 5, and then puts it into A. And if we run this now, what we'll see is this program will output the value of 5. And there it is. So accessing string methods is very similar, with one exception. With the math class, all the information I need is passed to the method. And so I don't need to specify anything to act on. But in the case of strings, if I want to use, for example, word one, I need to indicate the method is going to act on word one. Now, one way possibly to do this could be to pass it as a parameter, but Java is structured a little bit differently. So if we come back into our documentation and we quickly just browse through the math class, we'll notice that the word static is next to every method. Now if we jump into the string class and browse through it, we see that it has a number of methods. We scroll, there they are, methods. And notice the word static isn't there for most of the methods. And now what that means is that I need what's called an implicit object. I need to know which string I actually want to apply this method to. So let's take this first method here called charat which returns the character value at a specific specified index. Remember, if we click on the method name, it will actually take us to a better example and a little bit more documentation. And so here it is. So a couple things we want to remind ourselves. We want to know what is the parameter. So in this case, the parameter is one integer. What is the name of the method? Char at. And what is the return type? A character. And it gives all sorts of information, a lot of which we don't need. So let's jump in here and actually put this to work, shall we? So what you can see is I've declared two words, two string variables, word one, which is equal to pizza, and word two, which is equal to pi. I've also declared an integer called num, which has the value of two. And I've declared a character called c, which has the space in it. So one conceptual idea that's important to remember, and let's just pull up a new page here, is that in Java, if I have a string called word1, which is equal to pizza, we want to think about this as a reference variable. So this is word1, and then it points to the word pizza. So we want to think about the index of all the letters. So we can actually draw this out. So it's P, I, Z, Z, A. So it says there's pizza and it has the indexes 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. <clears throat> that looks like an L. Let's do that. I. There we go. So what I can do is specify the specific index I want to access and it's going to return that character. So let's jump back in here. So I have this character C, so I'm going to take 
one of the characters from one of the words and put it in here. So I say C equals to. So I want to access the string method, so I have to indicate which string to act on. We call this the implicit object, a word we explore in great detail in grade 12. So we say word 1, that's what I want to act on. And if you have jcreator pro and you put dot here, you'll get all the methods popping up. I want to use the method char at, and then I have to pass it an integer. So I'm going to pass it a 2 in this case. And now if I output this to screen, and I'm just going to take this one out, there we go, and I run this, what happens is we take the second, the value in the second index, and put it into C, and then print it to the screen. So in the case of pizza, P is 0, I is 1, Z is 2. So we see C1 is equal to word.char at 2, pulls that first Z out and puts it into C, and then I print it to the screen. If I put, for example, let's put 1, and now I run this, it's going to pull out the I. And there it is there. I can also, now if I want to do this, say, to word 2, I just change the implied object to word 2. And char at 1, in this case, would happen to be an I as well. So let's do char at 2. And we'll see that it pulls out the E. Now I want you to ask yourself, what happens here if I do this? So pi is three letters long, so I'm going to put three in there. And if I run this, look what happens. I get a very specific error called an index out of bounds error. Remember, even though pi is three letters long, the indexes go from zero to two. So by trying to get the char at position three, or index three, there is no index three, so you've actually gone out of bounds. And this is a common error you will see regularly in your work, so watch for it. I hope this introduction to string methods was helpful.